Okay, thanks for coming back. Uh, this is the next group of videos working on the Celestron CG4 mount. The first group of videos that came out were all on how to properly dismantle the mount. These next group of videos are how to clean them and check specifications inside, check the condition of the equipment. And then we will make a few videos at the end showing you how to put it back together, uh, get everything aligned, and make sure that all of the, uh, the gears and stuff are lined up properly so that it will behave better, which is the ultimate goal. So what I have out here laid out is all of the parts uh, that we took out of this mount, um, down to the small screws, everything is included here. So one of the things I'll go through is uh, I'll go and explain what some of these parts are and why they're important. Um, so let's take some of the big bulky equipment out of the way for right now. Uh, so what we have here is the, uh, the main equipment that exists inside the mount. And let's go through a few pieces. Uh, we'll start off with simple stuff. Here's a pair of flanged screws. These are the azimuthal adjustment for the base. We took those off right at the beginning. Here's a larger flange screw and a thumb screw. These uh, these were part of the uh, mounting screws. These are the lock screws for the dovetail. Uh, let's see. Um, here. These two are the altitude adjustment screws for the mount. So we have here various pieces. These are the right ascension and declination lock assemblies. We went through them before. Uh, so we have the brass mount. Um, the handles pop on here. When you turn the lock, it threads in a bit and it presses this brass puck against the axle inside to pin it to place. Uh, and on the other side, on the right ascension, it uh, presses this brake assembly on there. So a couple of screws and the pucks and the actual handles themselves. Uh, here are various, these are lock nuts and washers that held the declination assembly together. All the various screws that held the housings together. Uh, here is the mounting assembly for the polar axis scope. Here is the locking washer uh, that uh, locks the right ascension assembly in place. Here is the right ascension setting circle, declination setting circle. This is part of the uh, azimuthal mount adjustment plate. And then here we have the two worm gear housings. These are identical to each other. Um, part of the design, I mentioned that this uh, base design went back a couple decades. It went back to the original Vixen Polaris mounts and then the Super and Great Polaris. Uh, part of their design philosophy was to make these things completely interchangeable. Um, so that allowed them to design a single well-built mount with all the parts and they just used two of them on each mount. And so it meant that the, the worm gears in general were interchangeable. Now, back in the day of the Vixen mounts, they might very well have matched their worm gear to the worm wheels. But uh, these days with the Sinta mounts coming out of China, these, these replicas or clones uh, that everyone makes, that's unlikely. So you can take one of these assemblies, it doesn't matter which one, and you can switch it, right ascension, declination. Or if you find that you have a mount that has a bad uh, assembly, if it has a bent worm or something, you can actually source one of these from a different mount completely 
and replace it. So these are exactly the same machining. There, there's nothing different. The only difference in this case is one has an arrow on it and the other one doesn't. And they don't really mean much in that case. But otherwise, all of the pieces, so you have a couple of bearings, you have the, uh, the backlash adjuster nuts, you have the lock nuts, you have these spacers, and you have the worms. For each one of these assemblies, the parts are exactly the same and can be interchanged. Finally, we have a whole series of these fiber and plastic bushings. Uh, these three, the white ones and the black one, are plastic material, and they're different thicknesses. Uh, they were actually used as shims, so it's important to know which one you have um, and keep track of them. These fiber ones are, are more of a fibrous, heavy paper material, and they are designed for... Um, they, they give a little bit of, of give uh, to the assemblies. Um, now, it's important to re recognize that these are two different materials. And there's a couple different sizes. And so when we took it apart, we had to keep track of where each of these sizes went. So one trick that I want to show you is all these parts have been cleaned by me. But I'm going to show you the technique of how to do some cleaning. So in the first quarter, first four videos, I had shown you some Kim wipes that are good for, for wiping down materials. These are lint-free relatively soft, they're not going to scratch materials, they're not going to scratch up any of these things, and uh, they, they're disposable, they're easy to pad up in kind of a pad like that. And then what I use is high-grade alcohol, uh, high-grade isopropyl alcohol. Uh, this is 99.9% .9 pure. If you can get anything above 95% pure, either locally or online, that would work well. I prefer to put it in a little squirt bottle, but you can work with uh, any sort of resources you have. And what you do is you take your little pad. Uh, another thing that's a safe move here is to use gloves. Uh, alcohol isn't particularly dangerous to you, but after a while, you can get irritation from it. So get yourself some gloves, and when you're dealing with alcohol, you should use vinyl gloves. Uh, nitrol is okay, but vinyl works well. Uh, they're a little bit more stable against alcohol. So take your pad and just get it a little bit wet. And each of these parts, you can just sit here and kind of just get in there and clean them. So there's going to be that heavy grease. If you can wipe some of that off beforehand before you get in here, that'd be better. But just get in and wipe everything down. And this high-grade alcohol, within a few seconds, it, it dries off the part so they don't stay wet. And you will not damage almost anything by doing this. There's a few cases where there might be some sort of painted material. So like all these numbers on here, are actually laser etched, um, or maybe they're powder coated, they're anodized over. Those are going to be safe. Every now and then you come across something that's painted, and the alcohol can take that off, so you might be a little bit careful with that. If you don't know for sure, check apart carefully first. But get in there, all wipe off insides and outsides and threaded holes and all those things. As well, all the uh, outside parts. Wipe those down, get in there, and, and when your pad is, if it breaks apart, throw it away, get yourself a new one. These are cheap and disposable, and if they dry out and they're still in good shape, just put more alcohol on them, but eventually you will come across, if I bring this one back, it's a little hard to see, but there's some dark material on there. I've already cleaned this stuff pretty good. If you're cleaning it for the first time, your pads will become either black or brown. That's a combination of the grease and fingerprints and environmental things and dirt and dust and all that. But a lot of times it's fingerprints coming off from when you held these parts 
as well. So all these washers, make sure you get in there and clean those off as well, because especially these will accumulate that that uh, heavy grease. So just get in and clean those all off as well. These fiber washers. So we had mentioned that this is a brand new factory mount. And you might say, well, why do I have to go through and clean everything? Well, there's two reasons. One is that that heavy grease that we're trying to get rid of is on all these parts. And the alcohol will help break that up and get rid of it. The other thing is you got to think about the life history of these parts. Even though they're new to you, they're not actually new. They might have been manufactured six months or a year ago. And they sat in a warehouse somewhere overseas. And then they sat on a boat where they were traveling across the ocean for two weeks. And all the salt water and things like that. And then they sat in a warehouse here in the U.S. for a while. And then they sat on the shelf. And all this time they're wrapped in plastic. And what you get is a lot of outgassing and a lot of uh, this, this kind of aging of the grease. Uh, there's probably some materials that they put on the painted surfaces, like these pieces, to make them look clean and bright when you pull them out of the box. So they look like they're brand new, even if they are almost a year old and have traveled thousands of miles. Get in and clean the uh, shafts and clean these threads carefully. And make sure when you're cleaning, also get inside a bit. Get your fingers in there and clean inside the shafts and clean inside these bores inside here. So, so like I said, I've gone through all these parts already. Everything is pretty clean, but it's something to keep track of. Um, oh, even screws. Sit there and get down in the threads of the screws and clean those up. Sometimes they get gummed up with material. Uh, the bearings, all these things can be cleaned. So, and like I said, the, the alcohol should not damage anything. Finally, you come to your worm wheels here. Get in and clean those really well. And then in these teeth, you're going to just do the best you can. But get in there and just kind of wipe off the material in those teeth. And around here. Now, all these parts I cleaned in a secondary manner. I put them in a ultrasonic cleaner with hot water and some uh, scientific grade soap and ran them through the ultrasonic cleaner and that gets in all of the nooks and crannies and, and really breaks the grease up. So that helps quite a bit and that gets a lot of the material out of these teeth. If you have access to one, it works great. Generally, all the parts in the telescope are going to be either stainless or aluminum or powder coated and will survive just fine. But you need to be aware of certain things. So like these fiber washers are, like I said, they're kind of an actual fiber material. If you run them in the, in the cleaner like I did, they can actually warp just a bit and they can actually hold a bit of water. So make sure when you take them out, you get them good and clean or keep them warm. Put them out in the sun, let them dry properly. They'll flatten out again, but just be aware that these are, can be affected. Whereas, say, the plastic washers like this are immune to that. As well, if you put in an ultrasonic cleaner, you got to be aware that if there's any nooks and crannies you can't get to, there might be water trapped in there. So make sure that you give them a good cleaning afterwards with the alcohol. So after you put them in the ultrasonic cleaner, go back and wipe everything down with alcohol because the ultrasonic cleaner will just loosen the grease. It won't get rid of it. So you still have to clean everything off. And you want to make sure that you don't have water trapped inside anywhere in there. Uh, because if you do, it might come out after you've reassembled the telescope. And then you're going to have a lot of problems. So if you have resources like an ultrasonic cleaner and you know how to use it with experience, go ahead. It's a good tool. It gets inside screw threads and all that. It's not necessary. And it's not worth going out and buying one just to update your telescope mount. Uh, especially if you don't have experience with it. Okay, we're going to stop this video and we're going to start up again. We're going to start uh, checking things out and I'm going to show you how to put some of these parts together and check the status of them.